Hello everyone, welcome to the next episode of Showcase on Bloodborne. Alright, by request I decided to do this weapon next. I was planning to do the next beginner weapon, but I said screw it, I'll just take the request and just go forward with it. And do the next beginner's weapon next video. Or if there's another request, I'll take that. So today's weapon is the Rifle Spear. A trick weapon crafted by the workshop heretics, the Powder Kegs. A prototype weapon serving as a simple firearm and, and spear, possibly creating an imitation of a Lyle Ostkainhurst weapon which is uh, something I'll cover in the future. Lacks any notable functions, saving that it's only trick weapon with an attached gun. Well, it's a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> but yes, it's a rifle spear. It's a spear that is a rifle. It's possibly the best of both worlds, or is it? Well, something we'll find out later. Let's move on to stats. Okay, here on stats, we can see the basic damage for the rifle spear. Going on to physical, we can see we have 85 base physical attack and 85 foot blood attack. Blood attack specifically relates to mostly guns in most aspects. So we can see for damage, we can get, for bonus damage anyway, we get plus 46. And we can see for blood attack, we get plus 23. Going down to the special effects, you can see there's not a whole lot to it. Durability is a bit less than some of the weapons, but it's not a huge of a difference. And uh, for attribute bonus, we can see a strength you get E for strength, D for skill, D for blood ball, blood attack, and D for arcane. There it is again. Weird. True requirements, you need 10 strength, 11 skill, and 9 blood attack, or blood tinge. So, in the end, it's a bit weird that it has a, a tribute for, again, arcane, but it doesn't actually have it. Weird, very weird. But let's move on from that. Here's a screen I forgot to show in my last video, which is important. Here's the kind of damage the Rifle Spear does. You see the base physical attack is just 85, and of that 85, 46 of it is thrust. But the axe from the previous video is blunt, so this is very important against damage about enemy types, as you'll see later in this video. In the blood attack, you see there's 85 with a foot of bonus damage and such. But anyway, that's the bonus that's the basic damage info. Now, visually, it's a Rifle Spear. It's clearly a spear. With a very large head on it, like a very large one, which is a bit odd. You get a basic shaft, and you wouldn't normally hold this with one hand. This looks incredibly heavy to hold with one hand, it'd be really hard in the back of your hand. This would be more as a two handed spear, but, you know, this is a Souls Born kind of idea, so we can hold everything with one hand, no problem. Also, great swords, you got it. <laughs> to this point, you can probably see where the gun's located. <laughs> yeah, it's right there in the middle. So, when you activate your trick weapon, you can just get the... Oh yeah. So there we go. Now you see the weapons now turn into a rifle with the bayonet. So for simplicity, we'll call this the bayoneted version. Or, well, bayoneted rifle or something like that. <laughs> so you got the various d dynamics will change of how you swing this weapon now. It's no longer a traditional spear as you now have a blade that goes forward and that can pierce. But is the either of them any good in the state? Well, that's something we'll have to find out in the test. Okay, but first, animations. Oh, look at this. This looks familiar. A spear poke. <laughs> that was the basic attack. The heavy attack is a heavy spear poke. Oh, the spears. Okay. Going on from that, you can see the rolling basic attack is an upward slash with a spear. Weird. Very weird. Next is the heavy rolling attack, which is just the heavy poke animation. Nothing new there. Okay, next the back step. You can see there's a back step and a heavy thrust going forward, which is no different from the basic attack. And the heavy attack, back heavy attack, you see is an overhead slam. Hmm, interesting. Alright. Below well, that, what we see is next is the heavy well, plunge attack. This is going forward and using your plunge, you know, your heavy attack going forward. So interesting. Very interesting. A lot, of, a lot of different dynamics of weapons here and moves move and such. But before I go any further, I shall show it's the charge attack, which is just a very heavy, heavy lumbering poke. <laughs> okay, and the, also interesting, you can see there when I switch to it, it fires the gun. So it's a little neat little trick there. But now the animations for the bayoneted version. The basic attack is more like a halberd, more than anything. You're using it more as a slashing weapon than a poke. However, the heavy attack is in fact the poke. <laughs> Alright, so we got our basics there. However, the special attack will actually fire the gun. 
Which is more like a shotgun than a rifle, the best we see now. <laughs> okay, for the back step, you get a heavy jab there. And for the pretty much the heavy version of that is the overhead chop, like as if it was an axe. The plunge attack is a very awkward slash by the looks of it. Very awkward looking. Weird. Okay, now for the back step, and you can see I can actually fire my gun from that back step also. It's also pretty, pretty neat there. Okay, that's the back step with the normal attack, follow up with the rolling of the normal attack. And the ball rolling power attack, as you see, doesn't really do a whole lot different. You can roll and shoot too. Alright, I think I've shown enough animations there, but the left final one is I'll show the power charge version. When you hold charge attack with the ball bayonetta version, you can see it's more or less just a standard charge forward. And this is the version of switching back to one-handed. Alright, that out of the way, let's go on to upgrades. Now, for upgrading, I'll go with the Rifle Spear, and you can see that the various damage there. Okay, so we're going with the standard all the way up to one Blood Chunk upgrade. And you can see a very modest upgrade for every time we do. We get roughly 10 to 8 damage, roughly, in that area. Maybe around the 8 to 9. And you see in the, second, the third upgrade, our tribute bon bonus for skill goes up to a C. That's pretty good. So this is obviously more of a skill-based weapon. Though it's pretty obvious from the beginning of the tribute bonus. <laughs> Going forward, you don't see a whole lot of other change, not not too much. But we can see on the what was it, the sixth upgrade? Yeah, no, the seventh upgrade, your ball blunt edge bonus goes to a C, and then on the eighth upgrade, your blood edge for skill goes to a B. But we'll not be taking that that far. If I use that many blood chunks, I will not have enough for the future reviews. Unfortunate, these things are so hard to get. All right, so that's pretty neat. But now, of course, is the question is, is the arcane really worth anything? Now, unlike the axe from the previous video, video, the axe can go dedicated to arcane, but you cannot do the same with the rifle spear. It would simply add bonus damage, not dedicate damage. But enough of that, let's go on to performance. So, what's the best thing about a spear? Well, obviously it's reach. Your opponents, at any short attacks, can easily be just ignored and you can just poke right through it. So pretty useful in that regard. But what's the disadvantages of the spear? Everyone knows they're not so great for groups. Because you can poke one person, but you have difficulty poking many people. Even getting close is difficulty. Okay, so that only leaves the question, okay, what about the bayoneted version? Well, then it changes a little bit, so now you have more wide sweeping attacks, which could be useful. Somewhat. Damage wise though, I don't see a huge difference in the damage. It's okay, but eh, it's there. I'd say it's more of a change of nature than a change of attack. But otherwise, uh, if anything gets truly out of hand, you can always back off and just use your shotgun. That's always a good fallback measure. This weapon's better for probably PvP than PvE, in my opinion. Because you can really whip out that shotgun in the blink of an eye. And even you can use visceral attacks, too. It's a fully functioning shot well, shotgun, well, blunderbuss, if you will. And it's alright. It's not overly powerful, it does the job, but does it really replace the single-handed version? Well, that's up to you. In this, this true sense, you don't really lose a gun now. You have two-handed and still have a gun, so that's helpful. And you can use it in between attacks, as you can see here. So really useful for PvP in that sense. Now, for different types of damage, you can see here, I'll just pay attention to the damage. So it's 126 per spear poke. Heavy poke, 196. Okay, so not a whole lot of damage there. The axe clearly does more damage by a base of it. But now I'm going to switch to the bayonet version and I'm going to hit him a few times. So you can see there, 113. So I slightly lost a bit of damage. Why? Because it just changed from a piercing to a slash attack. Unfortunately, I can't tell you the numbers of that, because the game doesn't really... Need, I'm, not, not, I'm not that great with numbers crunching now. <laughs> okay, it's hard to tell what numbers of something you can't see. But it all depends on your enemy's armor rating. And armor is not a very common thing in Bloodborne. Only a few enemies have it, but this is a great example of these guys. These little dwarf guys, they don't fight, a whole, they don't fight back very often. <laughs> so you can see with the plain spear, you can, it takes quite a bit of jabs, but you can kill them quite efficiently. Yes. However, if you use the slashing bayonet, you'll find that the, the damage is dramatically less. Half, even. So it's best to always just stick with spear poking when you got a fully armored opponent. They'll show off again when fighting the bigger version of the dwarf. It's much, much more dangerous. 
And of course, for this opponent, the range is almost nullified, because the attacks from this opponent, and many other opponents out there, are just as long as any spear poke. <laughs> but yes, it's a very big problem when you have different types of damage, and your opponent, of course, has a much higher rating, well, armor rating compared for others. The villagers in the beginning didn't really have the armor rating that, you know, that, that would protect them against various slashing attacks. And you saw there the attempt to switch back to the single-handed version of my weapon and bumped against the wall, so there's also that disadvantage. So, pretty much the basics of advantages and disadvantages are pretty cut and dry. Spear is piercing damage, your bayonet version has the blunt or slash variant. It says blunt, but it's more like slash, but yeah, blunt. Which is pointless against armor. The shotgun, well, mm, shotguns aren't really affected by armor. But against the Shadow of Yarnum is a better question. They don't have any true armor, they're more nimble than they have armor. And that's the idea. So the bayonet version should be just as useful. You can see just a heavy spear bulk did a lot of damage against the Shadow of Yarnum. <laughs> But yes, it all comes down to your opponent, but this weapon's more of a defensive weapon. By keeping yourself just out of enemy reach, or by trying to exploit their armor, it's something about more defensive than offensive, even with the gun attached. You can still get visceral attacks, like so, but it's still a bit of a limited weapon. Piercing the spear piercing damage is still just a straight line. And there's many opponents out there that will, can resist your blunt attacks. So it's all up to you. In my opinion, I don't think this is really the best of all worlds. It certainly has a little bit of a jack of all trades, but I don't think it really masters any of them. Though for PvP, no doubt this would be better. But even if I wanted to do PvP, it's a little difficult to find people in this game nowadays. <laughs> Especially at my level. And that about pretty much wraps it up for performance. Pretty sure that's everything you need to see. Let's go on to score, and we'll first start off with the rifle spear. Okay, pros and cons. Pros, uh, what's the spear's basic pro? Well, obviously, it has good reach, keeping your foes at bay. Another good one, has pretty decent damage for a spear, and it's good against our enemy armor. That's another good pro. Cons for spears, and it does very poor against groups, since it's meant for a one-on-one. -on -one. And that's kind of like the only true con here. All right. We want to the score for the Rifle Spear. Damage, I'll give a 7 out of 10. Fairly basic average damage, pretty good. Reach, 8 out of 10. Not the weapon with the greatest reach, but plenty of reach to spare. Animation though, I'm going to give a 5 out of 10. It has a lot of different moves, but still, they're a lot of difficulty. Really, it's still the basis of one-on-ones. Group attacks, you're not handling groups with this weapon. Bonus damage for the spe Rifle Spear, well, the Spear Component anyway, is a 5 out of 10. It's okay, but you know, half the damage is made up in the gun portion, so when you have only the rifle, you lose kind of a third of the damage. <laughs> so miscellaneous, I give it a 4 to 10. Using as a rifle component, it's a bit limiting, because you do have a gun built into it, so when you have 200 version, it's a bit of a, you're basically only fighting enemies with armor with this one. So in total, I give the basic rifle spear 29 out of 50. It's good, but still, it's still just a basic spear in the end. Now for the score for the rifle and bayonet version, first obvious pro, it is now good against groups, it is now decent crowd control. It also has the functioning gun inside that's pretty much good to compare to other guns you can hold in your offhand. Alright, and those are kind of the two basic pros here. Going on to cons, the gun is actually a shotgun, so it does very poorly at range, as you probably saw in the performance. And the weapon fares poorly against enemy's armor, so that's two very glaring pros and cons. Going on to score for the rifle and bayonet. Damage, I'm going to give a 6 out of 10. It loses some basic damage based on the enemy's, you know. It has good crowd control, but overall damage lowers ever so slightly. For the reach, negating the shotgun, which would give it a 10, but for the actual weapon itself, melee-wise, it's a 7 out of 10. Animation, I'll give a 6 out of 10. You can use that gun, in the, the firing animation, in between attacks and rolls, so that's pretty decent. Still though, it's a bit limiting. So yeah, 6 out of 10. For bonus, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. You actually have the gun ball ball bonus damage thrown in with the lot, so that's better. On top of the already existing bonus damage. 
Miscellaneous, I'll give it a 6 out of 10. Because, why? It's okay, but it's not the best. Still, I'd rather you much use some weapons with an offhand pistol than use this bayoneted rifle version. <laughs> so in total, I give the bayonet rifle 32 out of 50. It's great. Have no worry about that. I'm not slamming it. It's definitely better than the plain spear. Alright, time for a conclusion. Well, you're probably thinking, ST, why did you carve this weapon? It barely does any damage. It's because they didn't put any gems in it. So, the question is, okay, how powerful would it be if you put gems in it? Well, I'll give you a small taste of it then. Any questions? There sure there could be plenty, but that's my gems. <laughs> Thank you all for watching, I'll see you guys next time. Take care out there.